welcome to the official youtube channel of pethor dabri college i am shobham ganguli a teacher at the department of english of pethor dabri college under university of kolani west bengal today what i wish to talk about in this particular video is a poem written by edmund spencer called one day i wrote her name but before going straight to the poem i would like to comment very briefly on spencer edmund spencer was undoubtedly a great poet in renaissance england he was born in london and was a student of cambridge university he had a acquaintance with all of leicester and even with queen elizabeth he married elizabeth boyle in 1594 but due to some economical problem he lived in ireland but during the irish revolution in 1598 he had to flee from ireland and come to england where unfortunately he died in 1599 in an exhausted situation he was buried in westminster abbey now edmund spencer is famous for his numerous artistic creations to name a few we have fairy queen sefer's calendar prothalamian epithalamian and so on and so forth but in this particular video we will only talk about a particular poem called one day i wrote her name which is actually extracted from amoriti which is a sequence of love sonnets written by edmund spencer and obviously was dedicated to his beloved and this particular poem is sonnet number 75 in amoriti now the entire poem was written in a spencerian rhyme scheme which we all know is a b a b b c b c c d c d e e a really very unique and difficult pattern to follow now look generally the first line of any sonnet is considered to be the title of that sonnet and this particular poem is no exception so here is the poem one day i wrote her name upon the strand but came the waves and washed it away again I wrote it with a second hand, but came the tide and made pains his prey. So we can easily imagine a couple, obviously the poet and his beloved, is standing on a sea beach, and the poet is deeply in love with his beloved, and he wants to celebrate his love. That is why he writes down the name of his beloved on the sea beach. Vainly hoping that this writing would remain intact, but obviously the waves of the sea comes on the shore and washed it away. But again, the third line, the poet says, "Again, I wrote it with a second hand." Here, the term "second hand" means second time. He repeatedly writes it down, so it showcases. that the love the emotion the passion that the poet had for his beloved is very profound is obviously intimate and the poet believes that in his love there is purity sincerity and somehow sublimity and that is why he wants to valorize his love but came the tide and made pain his pain this is quite natural because we all know that the waves must come and the waves must wash away the hanging work of the poet so it is somehow insane for the poet to try to write down the name and vainly hope to make it eternal now comes the next line Vain man 
said she, that those in vain essay, a mortal thing so to immortalize. For I myself shall like to this decay, and eke my name be wiped out likewise. Now it is very interesting that the poet himself wants to eternalize his beloved, his sweetheart. But his sweetheart herself wants to avoid it. He wants to tell the poet, he implores the poet not to do that fond act because she believes, she acknowledges that she is an, she is a mortal human being. So she must die. Therefore, he requests, she, she requests the poet to refrain this from this foolish endeavor. It is completely madness to write down her name on the sea beach in order to make it perpetual, in order to make it eternal. Because she must die. She is a mortal human being. So it is not a very sensible work done by the poet. It is completely insane to immortalize a mortal human being. And she also, she also believes that, and she knows it very well, that she herself, her physical beauty itself will be pulverized, will be dismantled someday or other. Because death is inevitable, death is unavoidable, it will come and it will perish everything, each and every beautiful object of this world is subject to death and decay. So very interestingly, here we compare the waves with the death. Just like death is inevitable, the coming of the waves is also inevitable. Here the waves is an agent of death. Like death, waves come and wash away the handiwork, the labor of the poet who wants to immortalize his sweetheart. Not so, quote I. Let desert things devise to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse, your virtues rare self eternize, and in the heavens write your glorious name. But on the other hand, our passionate lover, in the core of his heart, believes that no, his girlfriend, his beloved, is someone special. She is special. She is unique. And she think, he thinks that the ordinary thing of this world may be subjected to death and decay, but not the beauty, not the virtue of his beloved. Actually, the poet wants to say that the beauty or the virtue which is incarnated in her character, in her soul, that good virtue is something extraordinary, is something special. Therefore, it should not be perished like the other petty, ordinary things of the world. It should be eternalized. The last two lines where when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live and later life renew. So here we actually find a religious undertone in this line, which is the biblical reference when the entire world uh, will be doomed. The poet believes, then also their love will flourish even after death, because he writes down those poet, those 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 virtues and qualities of a beloved into his writings, 
into his poetry. And he believes that poetry as an art form cannot be perished. So here two things is going on side by side. One is the celebrating of love and number two is the celebrating or valorizing of art. Only art can defend death. And obviously here poetry is, uh, art, is an art form. So very interestingly you have to note that the poet does not talk about the physical beauty. The poet knows it very well that the physical beauty will, will be perished, will be dismantled, will be destructed one day or other. But he talks about that emotion, that sentiment, that, that passion that he has for his beloved. The good virtues, the ideals. Obviously, both the poet and his beloved will die someday. But the good qualities of his beloved and the love, the passion that they both share between each other will remain eternally. No one can snatch it away, even the death. So, here two things is important. One, that is, this love is not all about the physical pleasure, physical love. It is somehow the platonic kind of love and besides the celebrating of poet, celebrating of love, the poet also valorizes the art form because he knows that only art, only poetry can defend death. Death cannot snatch away art. Death cannot snatch away the lines of poetry that captures the virtues, that captures the love that the poet feels for his beloved. Last but not the least, you can easily can compare this poem with William Shakespeare's sonnet number 18. Shall I compare thee to our summer's day, thou art more lovely and more temperate? Remember the last couplet where Shakespeare says, so long as man can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. That this is the poetry. That this, quote unquote, this is the art. So that's all for today. Hope this video will help you for a better understanding of this poem.